Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. So, Lucifer, it was on the strength of his build up the dexterity of his making that pride came upon him are we together yes there's no time to begin to talk about lucifer lucifer was that cherub the bible says that cover it he was in eden the garden of the lord the entire object of his making was he was he was an artistry of god and his assignment was the custodian the light bearer revelations are stored as light and that was his office the son of the morning on account of the revelations of god that he had he built pride and said do you know what if this is all that makes god god then i have the secrets to be god i will exalt myself above the stars of god he said i will be like the most high treason was found in him he wanted to run a parallel government so you can choose either god or him and there was war in heaven now don't downplay the level of lucifer's intelligence even in heaven he deceived one third of the angels wow what would he have told them that made one third of the angels to literally leave their original estate the bible says and there was judgment in heaven michael the archangel you see that they met again over the body of moses you again they met Michael said, don't waste my time. The Lord rebuke you. So now, it was the judgment that came as a result of the fall of Lucifer. When you read the book of Revelations, it says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. For Lucifer, that great dragon, has been cast into the earth. He has come with anger and fury. That's why uncontrolled anger is the most classic proof that there is a spirit manipulating you. Yes, sir. Lucifer came down to the earth with anger and he was hovering around the face of the waters. It was the judgment of Lucifer that led to Genesis 1 verse 2. Do you understand now? So Genesis 1 verse 3 is God now bringing light. What light? This was not sunlight, I hope you know. Sunlight was created in day 4. This was the light, that the life-giving factor of creation. He withdrew it in the judgment of Lucifer. And so now God said, light be, that's the original Hebrew rendition, light be, and there was light. And then he began to create everything and he saw that it was good and so on and so forth. And then when we get to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, this is the first classic expression that proves the triune nature of God. And God said, let us, let us. So this was, this was a parliament. There was a meeting going on. Not let me, let us. But this does not automatically tell you whether there are three. There could be ten. Let us. So how do we know that it is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Are we learning? Next scripture, very quickly. Matthew chapter 3, please, from verse 14. This is the baptism of Jesus. Now look up, please. A little background again about Jesus. I hope you know that Jesus came to the earth for many reasons. Principally, to be a mediator, to bring many sons into glory. Are we together? He came and as, ex and as an expression of the love of the Father. This was revealed through his substitutionary sacrifice. To the end that whosoever believes in him, that report might receive the life of God in the flesh to show us that it was possible to live a victorious life. The third reason why he came was to become a marking script, a correction over our perceptions about God. Because until Jesus came, there were many things about God that people did not know. They did not have the rich um, opportunity to enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the degree to which we enjoy. He would come upon them and then go away. He did not have a permanent residence within them. So they credited all kinds of things to God. Jesus came as God's manual 
God's reference point so that everything you thought God did or was you looked at the life of Jesus to correct your orientation are we together now Matthew chapter 3 please thank you Jesus is someone learning but John forbade him saying this was Jesus at the baptism now I have need to be baptized of thee and thou comest to me and Jesus answering said unto him suffer it to be so now for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness then he allowed him next verse now watch this and Jesus the logos of God John 1 1 remember in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God the same was with God so we see two there the word and God the same was with God even though he was God also now the Bible says and Jesus so we see that Jesus was there when he was baptized he went straight out of the water and lo the heavens were open and he saw the spirit of god are you seeing now so this is jesus walking on earth in the flesh the heavens open and the holy spirit descending upon him lightning upon him like a dove 17 and then a voice which is not the holy spirit this is jesus on earth this is the holy spirit coming and another third voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son whoever calls him father what should be his name whoever calls jesus son must be jesus proved that he was father when he called jesus i mean uh, god proved that he was father when he called jesus so jesus the word the spirit of the living god the father one last proof in the mouth of two or three witnesses a matter is established matthew 28 the great commission from verse 18 matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth next verse go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of this is jesus talking now baptizing them in the name of the father of the son of the holy ghost he didn't mention any fourth person so we know from the mouth of jesus that the godhead is trinity jesus himself spoke are you ready for one last proof acts chapter 7 this was the matthias stephen about to be stoned acts chapter 7 from verse 54 please acts chapter 7 don't be tired of learning scripture it gives you accuracy of understanding and then you are able to walk in the reality of the power and the grace of god on the strength of the spiritual illumination you have it says when they had heard these things they were caught to the heart and gnashed when they heard these things they were caught to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth verse 55 now the bible says but he stephen now being full of the holy ghost so who was in stephen the holy spirit he looked steadfastly into heaven what did he see the glory of god and then jesus standing at the right hand so we see the holy spirit in stephen god manifesting in his glory the father and the son standing at his right hand why am i saying this thing so that you will believe from scripture not from opinion not from charismatism from scripture if your confidence is just based on what someone said it would dwindle with time but when your faith is anchored on scripture it becomes unbending you become immovable are we together now now the word spirit comes from the latin word spiritus it means breath spiritus S P I as Numa all mean the same thing. These are expressions of spirit. Are we together? So, a spirit, typically speaking, um, generally, it just means the life giving factor of anything. The life giving factor of anything is the spirit of that thing. Are we together? Gener Who is the Holy Spirit? number one the holy spirit is god acts chapter 5 
from verse 3 to 4 please the holy spirit is god this was the story of ananias and sapphira we're proving that the holy spirit is not just an archangel there are many well-meaning sincere people who have carried teachings all around the holy spirit is not an archangel the holy spirit is not a man the holy spirit is god in every way he's not junior to god he's not one of the errant people in heaven he is God in every way. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Are you saying that now? And to keep back part of the price of the land. Verse 4. Whilst it remained, was it not thine? After it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied to men, but to God. Peter now says... You have lied to the Holy Ghost and then you have lied to God. The Holy Ghost is God in every way. Number two, very quickly, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of God. The Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the presence and the power of god he is not just the manifestation he is the revealer of the presence and the power of god the holy spirit benny Hinn calls him the unlimited presence of jesus how true based on scripture he gives omnipotence to the presence of he could only be in one location at a time but now the Holy Spirit has come to multiply the influence of Jesus across the earth. He is the continuation of the ministry of Jesus. But now not just localized to one man. He can be everywhere at the same time. So the Holy Spirit is a revealer. He is also the manifestation of the presence of God. Are we learning? This is very, very important. Number three, very quickly, who is the Holy Spirit? The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the wisdom of God. This is very powerful. Wisdom, the wisdom of God. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2. Isaiah 11 and verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, he says, the Spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of wisdom. That means he is the life-giving force behind every manifestation of divine wisdom. There are three levels of wisdom as the Bible teaches. There is wisdom that comes from above, that is first pure. There is wisdom that is scientific, Sophia, that comes with experimentation and experience. There is wisdom that is diabolical and demonic. The wisdom we are talking about is wisdom that comes from above. Are we together? The spirit of wisdom Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17 Paul is praying now Ephesians 1 and verse 17 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom so the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of wisdom next point who is the Holy Spirit this is a very very important point I'm about to bring about the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the author of Scripture. The Holy Spirit is the authentic author of Scripture. Not just Paul, not just David the Psalmist, not just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Holy Spirit is the author of Scripture. Second Peter chapter 1, please, and verse 21. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 21. Second Peter 1, 21. Hallelujah. You can't find it. Go to Second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 15. 2 Timothy 3 from verse 15 and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture 
which is able to make thee wise unto salvation. Listen carefully. Through faith which is in Jesus Christ. Next verse. It says all scripture. How many? All scripture. Old Testament, the gospel, acts of the apostles, the epistles, revelation, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. By inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness verse 16 it says 17 now that the man of god may be mature and furnished unto all good works i don't know why they didn't find second peter is a mistake from me it says holy men wrote as they were inspired of the spirit so holy men only did the writing the author was god how many of you have seen people who translate the messages of others into books the translators cannot say the book is their own is that true the original person thank you second peter 1 21 for prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man but holy men spake as they were moved by the holy ghost if you help me transcribe my thoughts into a book you will be rewarded for your intelligence but the creativity and the intellectual property remains my own is that true so who really is the author of scripture no it can't be peter it can't be john they were moved by the holy spirit why is this important because if you ignore the holy spirit in an attempt to learn scripture you will end up in error listen carefully the source of error the real source of error is to just be scientific about the bible and ignore the person of the holy spirit in as much as the bible is truly an archaeological book a historical book a piece of literature but it is empowered with mysteries that only the author can unravel if the holy spirit does not assist you in opening scripture then you find out that you'll be reading history you'll be reading archaeology you'll be reading literature poetry and not have the requisite level of edification that comes with this this book is both closed and sealed. You can open it, but only the Holy Spirit can unlock the seals. Are we together? The Holy Spirit is the author of scripture. That means the next time you open your Bible to study, the publishers of this book were not the authors of the book. They only made it available to us. Holy Spirit, you are the author of scripture. Open my eyes and you will be surprised at the things that you will see. It says, open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law. Is God blessing us? The Holy Spirit is the author of scripture. Now, the Holy Spirit was revealed in the Old Testament like we know. He came upon great men and women to do exploits. But the character of his manifestation, listen carefully. You would notice that there was hardly a description of deep intimacy and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In fact, the person who came closest as far as relationship with the Holy Spirit is concerned was David. The man David. Cast me not away from your presence, he said. Take not your spirit from me. Are we together? But generally speaking, the Holy Spirit would come upon men in the Old Testament. Prophets, priests, kings. And then... He would perform something supernatural through them and return back. So they knew his power, but they did not have the opportunity to know and learn the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. They experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, but they did not have the privilege of what we call today koinonia, the fellowship of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Are we still together? Christianity becomes a religion if and when the ministry of the Holy Spirit is ignored. It is the presence and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in this faith work that gives excitement to this adventure. He is responsible for the exploits that men and women command in this kingdom. Write this down please. It was the Holy Spirit who birthed the church. Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. You also find that in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. 
the holy spirit was the one who birthed the church the bible says for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby as a family we can now cry abba father he brought us into this family acts chapter 2 and verse 1 when you read the bible says when the day of pentecost was fully come they were gathered together in one accord suddenly verse 2 there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty a russian mighty wind it filled the house where they were sitting there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire and it came and sat on each of them uh-huh verse 4 the bible says and they were filled with the holy ghost so the holy ghost birthed the church and if the church ignores him today then we'll become something else aside the church are we together we must bring back to our consciousness the person and the ministry of the holy spirit beyond religion beyond the fivefold let me tell you this the holy spirit is not a privilege of men and women of god in the gospel no the holy spirit is for everyone he's not just for pastors apostles prophet lever a non-believer and creation generally speaking it's more than just the salvation experience as you'll be learning shortly are we together praise the name of the lord because for many people the moment you begin to talk of the ministry of the holy spirit here's what they tell you i'm not called into ministry just leave me i'm a businessman i will keep giving you money while you keep knowing him and go and do your crusade there show us the ancient path will you lead us along we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to end now listen the holy spirit is not only god i want you to know that the holy spirit is a person he has the attributes of personhood this is very powerful the holy spirit i've told you here that he's not just wind he manifests as all those elements but he's not them the holy spirit has the attributes of person of personhood he has a personality what makes someone a personality the presence of a will the presence of emotions the presence of an intellect there's no time to begin to deal with this but let's I, I've, I've done the, this teaching um, describing the personhood of the holy spirit but for the sake of what we're dealing with tonight let's just look at it one scripture each will number one acts chapter 16 from verse 6 to 7 please very quickly help us we're proving that the holy spirit is a person the bible says when they had gone throughout all the region of galatia they were forbidden of the holy ghost he has a will the holy spirit forbade them verse 7 it says and after they were come to all of those names they went to those places but the holy spirit suffered them not he restrained them the holy spirit has an independent will it's very important first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11 first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11 11 but all these walked that one and the same self spirit dividing to every man severally as he wills the holy spirit has a will the holy spirit has emotions ephesians 4 and verse 30 ephesians 4 and verse 30 the holy spirit has emotions the bible says grieve not the holy spirit if he was not sensitive to that action the bible would not ask you to not grieve him he says grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby you were sealed unto the day of redemption the holy spirit has intellect intelligence romans 8 27 romans 8 27 the bible says he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit why because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god he 
knows what is the mind of the spirit first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 write it down please first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 we're looking at 10 and 11 the bible says but god had revealed them to us by his spirit for the spirit searches there is intelligence with the spirit the holy spirit is not a robot there is intelligence to him he searches all things yea the deep things of god for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god the bible reveals to us very quickly the purpose of the holy spirit we need to know why the holy spirit was sent why do we talk so much about him why did jesus talk so much about him the holy spirit has basically a threefold a threefold ministry a threefold ministry number one he has the ministry of conviction number two the holy spirit he goes this is the scope of his assignment conviction what does it mean to convict to bring to your awareness to compel you to pay attention to an object or a truth the holy spirit he's the one behind every kind of godly conviction number two the ministry of transformation what is transformation the name given to the process that makes you like christ in experience is called transformation my little children he says on whom i travail until christ be formed in you then the ministry of empowerment what does it mean to empower to empower means to engrace you to engrace you so that you are able to produce results that ordinarily you would not be able to produce are we together all of the long stories that i started with giving the theological background is to this intent listen carefully this is the core of my teaching now anywhere you find the holy spirit on earth it is one of these three things he's doing conviction transformation empowerment look at me uh, we're going to discuss his ministry uh, and the objects the recipients who are the candidates that qualify for his ministry but until then i want you to understand something every time you see an unbeliever the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation never forget this the greatest need of an unbeliever is not house rent the greatest need of an unbeliever is not the hospital the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation the greatest need of a believer is transformation when a believer is saved the next assignment of the holy spirit is to sponsor transformation an heir for as long as he's a child the bible says he differeth not from a slave though he be lord of all are we together transformation then the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment this is the sequence every time look just learning this alone will make you a matured christian so you you know how to bless people according to the categories when you see an unbeliever your principal assignment is to stand in partnership with the holy spirit to the end that he becomes a recipient of the life of god no matter what you do to an unbeliever if he has not received salvation you have not given him the greatest gift for a believer the greatest gift you can give a believer is an atmosphere and an information that can lead to transformation you can give miracles you can build a house you can bring breakthrough you can bring healing none of those things are superior in themselves the most superior blessing that you can give a believer is access to light illumination bringing him to a place of transformation then for a believer that is transformed the greatest need for a transformed believer is now to be able to prove and defend his proposition and for that he will need empowerment are you seeing that now just having this knowledge alone will make you such a mature christian and you will know how to help people you don't start talking about salvation to one who is already saved 
except you're just teaching him and mentoring him to also be an effective evangelist a non-believer salvation a believer transformation a transformed believer empowerment are we together and may i add that the greatest need of an empowered believer is character and humility when a believer is empowered he now needs character and humility because knowledge can puff up remember our teaching we just finished a series on witnesses so the holy spirit has a threefold ministry conviction transformation empowerment conviction transformation empowerment now write this down please who are the three principal recipients of the ministry of the holy spirit according to scripture there are three principal recipients of the ministry of the holy spirit number one creation you will be surprised to know that creation depends on the holy spirit to survive the holy spirit is not just a reality for christians or non-christians without the holy spirit creation cannot survive it was the light that came from him that sponsored creation coming back again withdraw the holy spirit is not only men that would die creation will also die are we together job 34 from verse 14 and 15 the first recipient the first recipient of the ministry of the holy spirit is the entire creation from verse 14 and 15 if he set his heart upon man if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath what happens to creation all flesh shall perish together and all man shall turn again to dust that means if god withdraws the holy spirit literally out of earth right now men will wither creation will wither science will come to naught the holy spirit is the life-giving factor of creation this is true the first recipient of his ministry is the entire creation plants animals nature etc everything that was made because without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and so everything that came from him has that life and that life is the holy spirit i have profound respect for science we have been able to advance so well in science especially in recent times people are still trying to disintegrate atoms to see if they can find a lot of other things you know and so on and so forth let me tell you behind if we keep breaking down breaking down breaking down breaking down we will arrive at one conclusion the unit of life is the word of god but in that word of god is the spirit of god ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 the spirit entered me when he spake unto me verse 2 the spirit entered me so the word of god contains the spirit of god the word of god contains the power of god habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 amplified habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 amplified it says and his brightness was like the sunlight and the rays streamed from his hand and there in the sun-like splendor was the hiding place of his power when you break life into its finest what you will meet is the word of god we call it energy we call it matter i don't mean to abuse and insult science but i can tell you from the authority of scripture the spirit of god is the life factor of the entire creation are we together the second recipient of the ministry of the holy spirit according to scripture is the unbeliever the unbeliever is not supposed to be an insultive word it's a description it's a state who is an unbeliever one who has not had the opportunity to hear and to believe the gospel what is the gospel a revelation of the father's love 
revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus, man and creation being the object of that love and that sacrifice. That is the gospel. For God so loved the world, John 3 and verse 16, that he gave his one and only begotten, now the firstborn among we the begotten, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, the Bible says, but have life eternal. Unbelievers. He has a ministry to unbelievers. What is his ministry to unbelievers? Conviction. The Holy Spirit has a ministry of conviction to unbelievers. John chapter 16, please. John chapter 16. Let's look at verse. Let's start from verse 13. John chapter 16. It says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. Please back down a little. I'm looking for the scripture where find it for me if you can okay i think that should be john 16 from verse 7 go down to verse 7 same scripture verse 7 please john 16 and verse 7 now listen it says nevertheless jesus is speaking now i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter the comforter will not come to you is the greek word alos parakletos the word alos means of the same material and the same mission the opposite is heteros alos parakletos the paraclet it says the comforter will not come unto you but if i depart i will send him unto you verse 8 when he is come what will be his mission his first assignment is he will reprove the world of three things number one of sin number two of righteousness number three of judgment he buttresses on that point verse nine of sin because they believe not on me so what is the sin there unbelief of righteousness because i go to my father and ye see me no more verse 11 of judgment because the prince of this world is judged listen to me the primary assignment of the holy spirit to unbelievers is conviction this is powerful so whilst you are listening to me now and the world is listening to me assuming i'm on a crusade ground while i am teaching sharing like reinhard bonke of blessed memory sharing like billy graham of blessed memory whilst you are talking it doesn't matter what expression it comes with in that crusade ground the holy ghost is hovering around the people bringing conviction what does it mean to convict to bring an awareness to plant in you seriousness over something conviction an awareness nobody sustains the power to save any sinner just with intelligence and oratory it takes the power of the holy spirit because there is a law that works in every sinner romans chapter 8 and verse 1 it says there is therefore now no condemnation it says to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit here it is verse 2 for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus had made me free not just from sin but a law of sin that leads to death every time you are sharing the gospel please listen to me believers every time you are talking to an unbeliever you are telling him about jesus the love of jesus I want you to expect at the back of your mind that the paraclete is there with you creating conviction this is what happened in the book of acts chapter 3 when they came and met the people they said who are these guys who are drunk with new wine and peter said no we are not drunk with new wine this is only nine o'clock in the morning but this is that this is that which prophet joel spoke about and now he began he went to david he went to joel and when he spoke to them the bible says they were caught to the heart that's the holy spirit and they said men and brethren what do we do he says repent for the remission of your sin and then you will be baptized and you will receive this promise for this promise is unto you and unto your children your children's children as many as are far off and in one day three thousand people came to jesus the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. He does not only convict, he compels. Is the Greek word anakazo, the compelling power of the Spirit. So that he will have men he can convict. He also sustains the power to draw them from wherever they are and bring them to the atmosphere where they can hear the gospel. 
this is powerful this is why we pray for people listen to me this is the entire idea about wanting more and more people to hear the gospel it's not just a celebration of crowd to show that a man of god has such influence over a city no jesus died for men largely and then creation so if he wants you to truly be an advocate of this gospel there must be a way of bringing men to you for god so loved the world why do we pray every time that god brings people to this place we don't just pray because we're ambitious people trying to look for a way of building an excelling career not at all we realize that until men come they will not have an opportunity to hear the gospel thank god for internet right now there are tens of thousands of people following online from different nations and they now have the opportunity to hear to be mentored to be built everybody say conviction so whilst you prepare to do the work of an evangelist which is a mandate for all believers you must know at the back of your mind that while i'm teaching because some of you are not able to win souls because you think i don't speak very well i don't know all of the scriptures if the holy ghost is not with you if you are not conscious of his ministry to convict you will only waste your time trying to talk to a sinner he will listen to you talk for over 30 minutes and you say in this book what happened and you begin a debate there that ends you in anger Many people have tried to go and preach the gospel without the consciousness of his convicting power. Let me tell you this. When the power of the Holy Spirit to convict is in a place, you can sing a song about redemption and say, come to Jesus. And people will run and come out because in that song, once the message of salvation is captured in it, I am not ashamed of the gospel, he says, for it is the power, not just the suggestion, the power of God unto salvation. Say amen. So that you leave this place this night conscious of the fact that the holy spirit has a ministry to unbelievers now you are not afraid of their faces because sometimes you'll be talking to people that when you look at their faces as if their face is so discouraging will this guy ever give his life to christ whilst you're talking they're not even giving you the attention don't mind them the holy ghost is walking at the end of that you will see let's listen go back to your family members some of you have family members that are not saved you've been advising them that's why they are not saved they need more than an advice they need the gospel the only vaccination for sin is the gospel the way your life is going why don't you become a better person that's counseling that's not the gospel the gospel is a revelation of the love of the father jesus must be mentioned for it to be the gospel the love of the father must be mentioned for it to be the gospel the sacrifice of jesus are we blessed conviction let's hurry up what is his ministry the third recipient of his ministry let's do a quick recap number one the first recipient of his ministry is the entire creation number two unbelievers number three believers he has a ministry to believers in as much as he plays that role now let me tell you this please look up you have to learn this when come dave let me use you watch this assume with me for a moment that this gentleman is one who is an unbeliever he's not been born again he's not giving his life to jesus okay so i am teaching in church now and the convicting power of the holy spirit comes upon him watch this as i lead him to christ usually you would notice in the context of my prayer i might not even mention the word holy spirit why because there is no other name under heaven given unto men the bible says by which we must be saved the office of salvation is the office of the christ even though the administrator of salvation is the holy spirit you have to understand this jesus today is seated at the right hand of the father so when you sing a beautiful song into my heart into my heart come into my heart lord jesus remember 
Come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Beautiful. Now, he receives the life of God. You say Jesus is in his heart, you are right. But the personality that comes in honor to that prayer is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, remember, he's the extension of the presence of Jesus. So it is true from scripture that Jesus lives in his heart. But the personality that lives is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what we call eternal life. He does not bring eternal life. He is the life of God. Are we blessed? So Jesus is in his heart. But it is the Holy Spirit representing the presence of Jesus. He lives in him. Jesus is in heaven as a person. I hope you know that Jesus left with his body as a man. He did not leave his body behind. The fact that Jesus left with his body is the most classic proof that he's returning. Because you need a body to operate on earth. It was difficult for him to come the first time. He needed to rally around a woman to donate her womb for nine months. Now you don't need that again. Any moment he can come because he left with his body. The next time you doubt if Jesus is coming back, remember he has a body that he can use. Are we blessed? So the Holy Spirit comes in honor to that salvation prayer. Now watch this. This gentleman just gave his life to Christ. He is now a believer. What then is the next assignment of the Holy Spirit? Let me tell you this. Listen carefully. He is now, he's received Jesus Christ, but he's not transformed. His senses are still deadened. He's still living in the flesh. He's still a carnal man, even though a saved one. Now the Holy Spirit begins the journey that we call repentance repentance is a journey it's not just a one-off thing no repentance means to realign your mind are we together now transformation is repentance hmm. so he says repent for the kingdom of god is within your reach now to repent means to realign your thinking and your understanding because your living comes from your thinking effective living comes from effective thinking are we learning God bless you. So now, for a believer, what is the first assignment of the Holy Spirit? My concern now is for a believer. We know that for an unbeliever, his job is pretty simple. To bring conviction to the end that the unbeliever will hear and receive the gospel. The benefit of receiving that gospel is the life of God. There is a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. What is the assignment of the Holy Spirit now to a believer? It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Write this down please. The first assignment of the Holy Ghost to a believer is to activate your spiritual senses. Before the word of God starts coming into you, you are already deadened spiritually. 1 Corinthians 2.14. Please help us. The Bible says, but the natural man. Please read with me. It's projected. One to read. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. So even though this man is saved. Listen. If you leave that man this way many pastors and many leaders are, are listening to me do not leave members just born again and leave them there that harvest will rot and there will it will not be fruits that abide because even though they are saved they cannot do much for the kingdom because that transformation has not happened so what we largely do in church is that we save sinners and now they become believers in christ which is true and it's a fact and we leave them there after a few months, we make them pastors. We make them deacons. We make them leaders in that state. Listen, if you are not in the kingdom, and even if you are in the kingdom and you are not transformed, many spiritual activities will not make sense. For instance, why will a believer lock his, himself in a room and dance and say, I am walking my way to victory? What does that mean? If an, if an unbeliever or a believer that is not transformed sees you, he says this Christianity has turned adults into fools. It's foolishness unto him. 
why will you say to sow a seed and you are saying you are using that seed to break luck to break pop it doesn't make sense why will you be praying in some kind of language you are just praying gibberish for hours and you are praying and you believe you are generating power who said that's how they generate power are you seeing now so when you see anybody laughing at your experience your christian experience you already know the category now so you can show the person mercy by saying i think i know what you need you look when you want to bless people with books you gauge their spiritual levels what book will help this person now oh you were saved that's why great men like Reinhard Bonke, when you were saved on their crusade grounds, they had books that they would give you to help explain salvation and begin to show you the next step. What we do is that most times when the average believer is saved, in truth, he does not know what is the next port of call. He doesn't know what else to do. If he's fortunate, they can say, come to church. If it's a church that has a methodical system of growth and development, then happy for that man. Otherwise, he will have to freelance his ideas about spiritual growth. Are you seeing why some of us are not having efficiency in our spiritual experience? Your organs of interaction. Suddenly the things you once laughed at now begins to make sense. What is this about praying in tongues? Bah, 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 bah. All these people are shouting. And now the Holy Ghost quickens you. You are now alive to Christ. It now begins to make sense to you. Isn't it amazing that you used to laugh at people who were crying. Whilst they are prophesying, they would kneel down and lift their hands. And you laugh and say, church people. Now look, you are, you are caught in that trap. The Holy Ghost himself. Remember when you would stand at crusade grounds from a distance and laugh and say Nigerians religion is what poor people do and and the Holy Ghost is just watching you now look 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 at you you are at the forefront of that advocacy listen do you know why I'm teaching you this because true love is based on understanding not just emotion now that you know this when non-believers or baby christians as we call them when they laugh at certain advanced things we do in the kingdom there's no point looking down on them and insulting them you show compassion because they are communicating their level of infancy you don't flog a baby when he pulls on the ground or when he moves around playing he's a child but when he's five year old and a five year old child and he behaves like that now you know that something is wrong with that child and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture which is able to build you up you see that to make you wise unto salvation the organs of interaction with the holy spirit that's the first assignment of the holy spirit to believers please learn this we're going to pray shortly the organs of interaction he activates your spiritual senses the bible calls it being alive unto god now the fire the passion you now understand why we pray now you understand why we do the things that we do and with our hands lifted up we will worship our king and with our hands lifted up we come before you rejoicing with our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why we just tell them we love in our king oh we just tell them we love in our king so when they do not understand why we do the things we do why will someone tell you you are a stupid man going to church every time and you can look at the person and say god bless you from whence does that compassion come they don't know what you mean to me they don't know what you mean to me the holy spirit listen so that your intercession can now be effective 
Some of you have loved ones who live around you, but they fight anything that is pro-spirituality. The key is not to look down on them. The key is to begin to pray the prayer of mercy that the eyes of their understanding be opened. Some of you is your spouse. You love God, but your spouse does not seem to have that kind of passion and zeal. Now you know what to pray. God help him is not the prayer. You must be intentional and methodical with your prayer. The diagnosis to that situation is that that person is saved, but is still in the flesh. He's still a carnal man. And the Bible says he's a natural man. He cannot understand the things of the spirit. They are spiritually discerned. So when the Holy Spirit comes, now he begins to help you. Fasting now begins to make sense. Worship now begins to make sense. You can wake up in the night and pray and not feel guilty for stretching yourself that much. Coming to church, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord most people think church is a place for people who are poor and broke and are struggling so they just quickly come and receive breakthroughs from god once they are all right they wave until the day they are in trouble again no no they that be planted in the house of god they shall flourish in the courts of our god the bible says even in old age that means they should be there in a long time they will be fat and flourishing the second ministry of the Holy Spirit to believers. Have I lost you? Are we still together? Now I'm, I'm zooming in on his ministry to believers. Number one is activating your spiritual senses. Number two, revelation and understanding of scripture. This is the second ministry of the Holy Spirit. Please, please pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit has the exclusive know-how to make scripture open to the believer. You have to study scripture by submitting to his influence. Reading the Bible just as a, an intelligent Christian manual. Let me tell you what you will find if you read the Bible without him. You will find a plethora of controversial statements. At the end of your study, you would arrive at one conclusion. Both the writers and the God who led them, they are not thinking well. If you read the Bible without the Holy Ghost, you will see lots of things, the mistake. I hope you know that the personality of the writers rubbed into the writings too. So it takes the Holy Spirit to, to perform that surgery and separate what came as a result of the limitation of the writers versus the intent, what God intended to be understood. That's why he's called helper. Bazanji Soropa. Bazanji Kunyaba. My helper. As I study scripture. I learned the ways of God. John 14 and verse 26. Just two or three scriptures very quickly so that we'll tie up this teaching. Is God helping us? John 14, 26. Help us please, media. John 14, 26. But the comforter, now you know the word, Allos Paracletos, the paraclet of God, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. What will he do? He will teach you all things. Everybody say the Holy Spirit is a teacher. One more time. Please say the Holy Spirit is a teacher. He will teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance. I rebuke memory loss. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says the Holy Spirit can bring to remembrance whatsoever i have said to you that means there is nobody that is dull the holy ghost can bring to remembrance he can bring to remembrance are we together john chapter 16 from verse 13 now very quickly john 16 from verse 13 how be it look up please jesus began to speak he says i have many things to tell you he was talking to the disciples but ye cannot bear them now he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you my goodness 
into all truth we're coming there he will not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear he shall speak he says and he will show you things to come apostle how do you know what will happen he will show you things to come he didn't say he will show prophets things to come he will show you things to come he can let you know that this man coming is your destiny helper position yourself well do not miss that opportunity he will show you things to come so the ministry of the revelation and the understanding of scripture you find out that you have difficulty understanding scripture you can call on the holy spirit with every sense of humility and faith spirit of the living god you were sent to open up scripture open it up open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from thy word and suddenly you begin to study things that you never saw there were oases that you are not seeing it does not mean it's not there your eyes must be opened in the name of jesus christ number three very quickly what is the ministry of the holy spirit to the believer number three guidance and direction this is very powerful guidance and direction now we can read john 16 and verse 13 proper john 16 13 then we go to isaiah 30 21 john 16 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you everybody say guide you truth is dangerous without guidance it's not only a lie that destroys truth can destroy many people have been destroyed by the truth he must guide you when you're in the kitchen not every part of the knife has the rubber handle is that true there is a part you use to cut and then there is a part that you can hold do you know that as profitable as that knife is you can hold it wrongly to your detriment there are women who have used knife in the kitchen and mistakenly cut themselves that was not what the knife was meant for but it happened anyway you can use truth the devil can conjure one truth into another many people who have gone into error in the body of christ it's not lies that de that deceive them it's truth without balance the devil can use it is written and destroy you don't say once it's in the bible i will do it you must be guided there are many things in the bible demons spoke men spoke in the depravity of their heart it's all in the bible the bible is a prophetic book you can make it speak any language you want the spirit of god needs to guide men are we together Isaiah 30, 21. I'll explain to you shortly the difference between guidance and direction. The Bible says, And thy ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left. Psalm 23, the classic sign that reveals the ministry of the Holy Spirit to guide. 23, verse 1. Media, please help us. The Lord is my shepherd. Say it after me. The Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Verse 2. The Bible says he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me. Everybody say he leads me. He leads me beside the still waters. Uh-huh. Verse 3. He restores my soul. Again, his leadership comes. He leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake now look up please let me explain to you the difference between direction and guidance direction tells you where to go guidance tells you how to get there direction tells you where to go guidance tells you how to get there when you are walking with the holy spirit you will not get direction every day sometimes in a whole year you may just get two or three instructions for your direction what you need every day is guidance i can direct you and tell you you want to go down to the overflow outside go this way turn left go right that's direction they are outside 
but guidance will tell you as you come down there is a staircase here be careful are we together that's guidance so here's what the word of god says it says thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path a light to your path is direction a lamp to your feet is guidance listen to me most of us have received divine direction you have not received guidance you need to pray for both direction and guidance if you're with me say amen, amen. and to do both is no other person than the holy spirit himself he can guide he can direct next ministry are we together there are five major ministries of the holy spirit in the life of a believer we're almost there number one activating your spiritual senses onto godliness onto righteousness number two he brings the capacity to understand scripture number three the ministry of guidance and direction ready for number four number four the fourth ministry of the holy spirit in the life of a believer is the ministry of renewal and transformation renewal and transformation philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 what is renewal what is transformation aligning your mind your thinking your belief systems to the ways of god let this mind be in you it says which was also in christ jesus please look up jesus did not just excel because he was the son of god there was a belief system there was a philosophy he had an ideology that made the holy spirit comfortable walking in him and he says permit that mindset which was in christ jesus to also be in you hallelujah first Corinth, second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 popular scripture second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 the bible says but we all how many of us how many of us everyone can participate every believer in christ is a candidate for renewal and transformation we all with open face beholding as in a glass or a mirror the glory of god he says we are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as sponsored by the spirit of god the holy spirit that means i can evolve to more superior versions of myself this is good news the yesterday version of me may be weak the yesterday version of me may be prayerless. The yesterday version of me may not be powerful. Demons and witches and wizards can just play you like a tennis ball. But when you submit to the ministry of renewal and transformation, give yourself a little time and you emerge a giant and a champion. I went up by revelation. In this kingdom, we go up by revelation. Are we together? Please help them. I went up, help them, please help them. I went up by revelation. Please take him, I think he may need some medical attention. Something is wrong there. I went up by revelation. transformation and renewal now please look up the holy spirit there is a relationship between the word of god and the spirit of god it is the unity of the word and spirit everybody say the word and spirit it is not the word alone it is not the spirit alone for a very long time in the body of christ look up please everyone for a very long time in the body of christ there has been a conflict among believers as to the word and the spirit we have a section of believers who are word people they don't have any business with the holy spirit word then we have other charismatics who are spirit people power manifestation no word the bible never teaches us to choose either the word or the spirit it is always the spirit and the bride say come the idea of dichotomizing the ministry of the word and the holy spirit is not an accurate exegesis of scripture the holy spirit takes advantage of the word of god and now begins that mentorship it's like a student in class you need both the textbook and the lecturer is that true for effective study and knowledge even though you have the textbook it's not enough you can read up here and there but for methodical growth you need the ministry of the lecturer 
and the manual the lecturer helps you to explain because in most cases you are reading his own book transformation and renewal transformation and renewal the last ministry of the holy spirit in the life of a believer is empowerment pay attention we're about to pray empowerment pray in the spirit in one minute empowerment isaiah 61 Empowerment. 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 The ministry of empowerment. Isaiah 61. Please pray. Sikete barakatosh kelene makatas. Kalanda brateskia. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Please give us Isaiah 61. Look up everybody. Isaiah 61 from verse 1. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed. Everybody say anointed. The word anoint is the root word ordain to ordain means to legitimize an operation it means to commission it means to make legal your operation it means approved by an authority are we together so when we say you are ordained we don't just mean oil was poured upon you no oil can be poured upon you and yet you are not ordained to anoint means to legitimize an operation it's an ordination the spirit of the lord is upon me because the lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted ladies and gentlemen it takes the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted you don't bind up the brokenhearted just by counseling you need the anointing he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty it takes the anointing more than oratory to tell people you are free you can declare you are free and yet they are not free but with the anointing you can truly declare that people are free and they return free acts chapter 1 and verse 8 jesus himself is speaking now acts chapter 1 and verse 8 please give it to us acts 1 verse 8 but ye shall receive power ye shall receive power Koinonia, ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost, not outside of the Holy Spirit. Please look up. It is possible to have power outside of the Holy Spirit. Power of witchcraft, power of satanism, diabolism, etc. That have all kinds of side effects. But if it is the power from on high, your power in this kingdom is a derivative of your relationship with the Holy Spirit. For instance, if you go to meet a spiritualist or a herbalist, he's not looking for a relationship from you. He just needs to know what do you want. And immediately, he, he doesn't even need to know your name. But when you come to God, God give me power. He takes away your hand and says, I want your heart first. I want a relationship. The power of a believer is a derivative of a relationship. So if you come to me and you say, Apostle, I need power. I will first lead you to the custodian of that power who is the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power. Now you understand. After that, the Holy Ghost is come. Not before, not during. You engage his ministry. Then you receive power. And the power will help you to be a witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. This was Peter in the house of Cornelius. This was the salvation of the Gentiles. This is the first time from scripture that the Gentiles will be coming into the faithful. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. It says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. Everybody say the Holy Ghost and power. One more time. Say the Holy Ghost and power. It says he went about. You would see him walking alone, but he was not alone. He went about. Not they went about. He went about, but was not alone. My goodness. From today, somebody will go about, 
but you are not alone he went about doing banking but you are not alone he went about in politics but you are not alone he went about as a man of god doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him the most important message is not power was with him god was with him for god are we together was with him write this as we attempt to conclude the holy spirit is the custodian of the anointing just help those under the anointing my god the holy spirit is the custodian of the anointing please hear me believers you know we are sent to the body of christ more than just this family this fold and i have to tell you this it is easy to delve into witchcraft delve into spiritism delve into all kinds of extra biblical practices and all kinds of demonic activities in sincere search for power there are sincere people who just desire power for ministry power for living and because they yes what is the power do this do that do this do that and because of our desperation for results i'm not saying this in in a in a way that 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 administers condemnation but it's a call for us to be careful there is nobody who is truly empowered in this kingdom genuinely empowered came from the holy spirit so the anointing and the power that we have is a derivative of our relationship just help those under the anointing now watch this some of you if you have a card maybe a debit card or so and if you have a child or somebody you see someone else with that debit card there are two things that that message will tell you either you are a thief you stole the debit card or you have a relationship with the owner of the debit card is that true if you see me with your debit card i have a right to meet you and say sorry i saw this man with your debit card and you say yes i gave it to him as proof of a relationship so when you see people carry power and yet you the custodian of that power is still a mystery and is distant to them something is wrong The power that the believer commands in this kingdom, genuine, authentic spiritual power, is a product of relationship. It's traceable to him. The more we love him, the more we spend time in his presence, the more we grow. In fact, did you know that some of the most powerful people, it was not even power that drew them to God. They loved God with all their hearts. Lord, I love you with all my heart. I seek to see your kingdom come. I seek to see your glory revealed. And while you spend time in fellowship, in worship, study of scripture, learning his ways, soaking in that atmosphere. One day, like a brother in church, they will just give you the mic and say, please, can you lead 10 minutes prayer? And you stand and hold that mic. And the only thing you remember saying is let us pray there's fire everywhere and now people are wondering what is that a little subgroup bible study dear sister can you help us just share something and you just bring a little piece of your secret place and whilst you are sharing people are looking and saying from whence come at this you see when you see that kind of result as soon as you are done you run back to him i have found the secret the secret of relevance i have found the secret so the more i stay with you the more men need me the more i stay with you the more you announce me the secret of being visible is to be hidden with him i'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me i am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me yeah. 
I am victorious. I have overcome. I am victorious. I have overcome. Say, I am victorious. I am. Overcome, I am victorious. Listen to me. If you embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit, He will take away shame and even reproach from your life. My call tonight, therefore, beloved people, most of the things we have been searching for in the hands of men can only be found with Him. The fame you are looking for, the visibility you are looking for, He's the custodian of it. The power for miracles, signs, and wonders. You may receive impartation from men, but genuine grace that lasts only come from him. You want to have understanding of the word of God. You want to walk in victory. Now, thanks be to God, the Bible says, which causes us always to triumph. Triumph is only resident with him. But you see, the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. He will not struggle and wrestle with the spirit of man. You have your own will. The Bible says, as many as received him. That means he can be rejected. It says, you shall receive power. You can reject it. Please listen to me. There are some of you here who are in ministry or have a call to serve the purposes of the kingdom in the fivefold. Some of you are called to business like we've discussed in our series on witnesses. Can I tell you this? In all your getting, until you truly encounter the ministry of the holy spirit the holy spirit is not just useful for fivefold ministry he will bring one business idea from your spirit that will cause nations to celebrate you forever look what he's done with our lives look at it he's a master at bringing beauty and glory there are things when you see men cannot do this brothers and sisters no man can do this except God be with him. Therefore, I introduce you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Sent by God to make men. Sent by God to produce champions. You embrace his ministry. I assure you there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to bring you down no no divination no enchantment whatsoever the holy spirit and his power the holy spirit god never sends us alone the holy spirit makes us and he sends us and the lord walking with them businessman hear me you don't just need ideas and partners you need the holy spirit politician hear me you don't just need intelligence and an opportunity to make policies you need the holy spirit he was the wisdom behind the exploits of daniel the creativity behind joseph the power that strengthened deborah the intelligence that led esther to become queen the wisdom that made ruth become the wife of boaz samson the spirit of might that came upon him to become a mighty man did you not see how Samson defeated Goliath? Time will fail me, the Bible says, to talk of this man. The Holy Spirit. You have embraced things of lesser value. 
now it's time to give him a chance you have embraced money you have embraced fame you have embraced the complimentary card of those you perceive to be great yet ignoring him you have a garage in your house for your car because you consider it valuable you have a jewelry store or a, a jewelry collector for all your expensive jewelries show me the place you have prepared for him as proof that you value him you have a store where you keep food in your house because you know that man shall not live by bread alone but there is bread in the equation of his living so you kept space for bread who taught us to ignore the ministry of the holy spirit so much we have interpreted him today as a nuisance to civilization when you talk to a businessman about the holy spirit ah, leave that church thing we are trying to seal a deal it is vain to wake up in the morning only to sleep late in the night eating the bread of sorrow it is only god that can give men rest hear me brothers and sisters we're about to pray god is calling you to a higher call a higher dimension it's time to stop living an ordinary natural life no your life will not produce glory when it is ordinary the holy spirit you can invite him and he can come and you can start a journey that journey of power are you ready to pray when you pray then i will speak over your heart listen the holy spirit is not looking for an affair he's looking for a relationship a relationship that lasts come after 30 40 50 years of your life he's still your best friend i introduce to you one who is not just god alone but he one holy spirit i need you afresh in my life i confess my need for you go ahead and pray oh i confess my need for you Spirit of the Living God. Shena masala mana da ne mala na mana na tiara da da. Shalaka tebrenda kete balasha. Are you praying? I need you. I need you. I need you. Listen. Look up. I used to think I love you was the most powerful sentence in English until I found out that there is a sentence higher than it. I need you. I need you is an expression of total dependence. You are my life. I don't want to patch you among my many activities. I don't want to use you as a spare tire so i keep running with my mind then when i encounter trouble where is that errand boy called the holy ghost come and help me get a miracle when you are done he says now you can find your way you must embrace the presence of the holy spirit cry for a relationship are you ready to pray please lift your voice in one minute don't be distracted pray he is the maker of men. He is the lifter of men. The Holy Ghost is the helper. Rasso in the name of Jesus listen we'll sing this song just once 
it just came to my spirit spirit lead me where my trust is without bones let me walk upon the wall help me wherever you will take me deeper than my feet For the last time, Spirit leads me in. Let me walk upon the waters. Take me deeper than my feet could ever walk. I pray for you a hunger for intimacy with the Holy Spirit may that grace come upon you as individuals as businessmen as members of parliament as a couple may homes in this place become tabernacles for the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ not only your heart but may your house become an altar it says above the cherubims below the mercy seat there i will meet with you that you will make room for him the grace to wake up in the night and while others are sleeping you are fellowshipping you are the lover of my life i cannot do without you desperate for you thirsty for you you are life to me you are not a charm or a genie that i use for miracles i place priority on you i need you with my life hallelujah listen to me when you find him you find power when you find him you find influence when you find him your fear dies you no longer fear the future will i be great will i last all that is nonsense when you find him but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day you can tell that your ministry or your business 30 40 years will still be blazing fire and bringing glory to the name of the lord we live in an uncertain world almost nothing is certain right now but i tell you you can find certainty in an uncertain world let him hold your hands let him hold your ministry let him hold your family apostle you don't know what will happen. i'm afraid for my children i don't even know what they will learn commend them to the holy spirit and remain a steward while he remains the owner and you can find rest otherwise hypertension will destroy you in such a world that we live in when you find him you find life listen to me our time is fast spent i have just two or three minutes zaria abuja following online i want to make an altar call right now please no movement let's minimize movement this is a very solemn before i speak blessings upon you i just sense in my heart to make the altar call there are people who are here hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.